If you've ever forgotten your ear pro on your way to the gun range, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is just a literal cesspool of hell. Get in there and find out why it's the most uh, infamous gun comment section on YouTube that people frequently fear. And I think companies fear as well, which is why nobody uh, contacts me to review stuff anymore. I'm just kidding, guys. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate you guys. The biggest support of our channel right now is Gun Mag Warehouse. They give us support monetarily, and we hook them up by buying sick magazines. And they're not actually sick. They are... Um, they're, they're cool, not like ill, like with cancer or anything like that. Um, if you guys have ever wanted to wear the clothing that I wear, Beyond Clothing. Beyond Clothing makes clothing for professionals. I was issued it a long time ago, and I continue to be issued it. It's awesome clothing. Um, it's very durable, very tough. I've used it all over the world, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a duty-type clothing or just some type of adventure clothing. They make military and kind of more civilian gear. Both are excellent. There is a discount code, Grantham, and there's also a link below that will apply it site-wide. So get in there, check out that clothing. If you're looking for a sick plaid and bags, you have Vertex. Of course, we have LEX ammo, big supporter of us. Get in there, get ammunition, get training. Ladies, gentlemen, TAC helicopters, and finally, F-35s. I don't want to leave you guys out. I know some of you identify as an F-35. God help your, th your soul. <laughs> okay. Today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting video. We're going to be talking about hearing protection. Now, hearing protection is very, very important for one reason. That's that your ears, your hearing doesn't typically get better. It can, but typically it gets worse over time. And especially shooting guns, that does a lot of damage to your ears. So we need to make sure that we are taking care of our ears. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to listen to that sick trap music that you guys want to listen to when you're like 35. Look at you, Marine Corps. So oftentimes, the simplest solution is one of the best. So earplugs, they work great, right? Little foamies, put them in, roll them up, put them deep in your canal, and then uh, they expand and boom. Good hearing protection, great. Now, I have upgraded typically a little bit, so I use a Surefire uh, EP4 Sonic Defenders. So what they do is they go in ear and then you can also open up a flang and that allows conversation, anything above, below like 82 decibels to get through, but it blocks out like the more, you know, damaging noises above that decibel level. They have about a 24 decibel noise reduction. They're pretty cheap, so we'll link them right below. They're around $14, so that's what I typically use. Now, if you want to get a little bit more fancy, and I typically do, I usually recommend electronic hearing protection. Now, there are a variety of reasons why I recommend electronic hearing protection. Um, what it comes down to is that I like to be able to hear what's going on around me. I like to have situational awareness. I like to be able to talk to people without having to like yell into their ear or you know pop open my ear pro in case somebody's shooting and I get ear damage and all that kind of stuff. Now, quick note before we move forward, if you are going to be shooting indoors, I highly recommend that you double up in ear protection, both in and over ear protection. Um, it gets pretty loud in there. Now, if you're shooting outdoors, you can go either or. Some of my friends still do both, but I typically just do over the ear protection when it comes to the outdoors. As a quick note for you guys. Now, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on ear protection, um, that's like comms capable, the type of stuff that I'm going to be talking about today, realize that there are some really good sport type hearing protection from Peltor. You have um, just their basic sport types, and you also have the Peltor um, Defenders, which are basically contacts without all the you know, communication software in them, so, or communication equipment in them. So there are a couple things that you can do, and I know that there's other electronic ear pro, but I prefer Peltor if I'm not looking for comms capable for hearing protection. Now, when it comes to hearing protection, what do I typically wear? Well, the gold standard is going to be the Peltor Comtac 3. These are kind of what everybody's wearing right now, and there's good reason. They're just very good at a lot of things. They're not amazing, but they're just a great benchmark, and it's for that reason that most people are wearing them, even though they don't need comms capabilities. So as you can see right here on mine, I have a boom mic, all that kind of stuff. I have a comms down lead. Do I need all that stuff? Yes, I do. Almost all the communication headsets that I have here today have the ability to link into some type of push to talk, that way I can link into a radio and talk on them and all that kind of stuff. Now these radios are for military, like they're like the Prick 152 or the 148 Embitter. Um, if you're looking to, you know, hook your the Peltors or any of these other headsets into different types of radios, maybe your police officer or something like that, you might need to look at some type of adapter cable or maybe look at a 
company that does those conversions. You have companies like Safari Land, um, Peltor. Um, a great one is Atlantic Signal. They do really good work in TEA. So those companies can all convert it for the type of radio that you need. Now, communication stuff gets really complicated, so we're not going to really get into it too much other than to say that it is an option. Getting back to the Peltors right here, why are they the gold standard? Well, they have a noise reduction rating of around 23 decibels. That's pretty good. They're also not too fat. They're fairly slim. Uh, they fit fairly high on your head. That means when you bring a stock up to your cheek, you're not pushing them or jackknifing them off your, your cheek where you get that opening. I know it's happened to me with a lot of cheaper Ear Pro, and then when you're firing, you can hear all that noise right in your ear, and why even have Ear Pro and on at that point. So they're pretty good at that. They stay where they should be. And on top of that, they last for a long time. These have about a 500 hour battery life. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. First off, that's under ideal conditions, like 70, 80 degrees with lithium batteries. And I do recommend lithium batteries. Um, and you know, the ambient noise level at a pretty low, that way it's not, the speakers aren't constantly going. I found that in reality, on like a good day, I'm getting around maybe 80 to 100 hours of runtime before I have to switch out the batteries. Um, if it's very cold out, I can burn through these easily in a day. So let that be a quick note. And that goes for every headset out there when it comes to its battery life. So five to 600 hours, yes, in good conditions. This is a quick note. Um, now with the Peltor Comtacs, um, a lot of cheaper headsets when with their active hearing protection, when you shoot a gun, they actually click out. So they actually stop the noise, right, completely. Peltor's are really cool because they continue to filter in that noise, they just compress that sound level down to a level that is hearing safe for you. So that way they don't click out. You're not losing situational awareness when you're firing with these pelters on. That's really helpful. Now you can see the microphones right at the front here. Mine still have the little uh, foam windscreen protectors right there. Um, do realize that under high wind conditions that no headset does very well, but pelters do okay. Now if you look at the inside of the gel cups right here, and I am running gel cups, um, you notice that they're kind of crushed down, and that's kind of a problem. So there are two different types of kind of ear pads you can get. You can get foam ear pads, or you can get the um, gel cups. I prefer the gel because they're very comfy. Um, I can wear them for a much longer period of time before I start getting that ear fatigue and that ear ache and that tension headache. So I do prefer them. Now the problem is that under high heat and you're wearing them for a long time, they eventually start to crush down and you do have to replace them periodically, and they're not cheap. They're about like, you know, 40 to 50 bucks. So I hate having to replace them, but they do work. There are a couple companies that make these. Pelter makes them. You also have Noise Fighters who make one that has a little cutout for your ear pro when they're going in behind them. So there are different options out there. Just realize that um, the gels are awesome, but they will um, cause some problems as far as having to replace them more often. Now, moving to the side of the Pelters right here, the compartment is waterproof, it prevents dust and all that kind of stuff from getting out. They have these little rubber flangs that prevent all that from getting in, and then we have a AAA, and we also have another battery compartment on the other side. So you have two AAA batteries. I do have lithium running in these, and they last for a good amount of time. Now, going to the back, we have these accessory ports right here. You can plug in different types of things. You can plug in iPods if you want, listen to, the, to some uh, T-Swift. Uh, you know, that's pretty good music right there. Um, on this side right here, it's hooked into my boom mic. It has a little wire running back there. So you can see that's where it's going. You can remove the boom mic. You just disconnect the back of this cord right here. And then all you have to do is just pop off the mic and you can disconnect it. That way you don't have a mic running around when you don't need it. That way you don't look stupid when you're on the range like me. So different options there. The bottom right here, we have the controls. Pretty simple. It's just hold down one of the buttons and it will turn the headset on. Forward puts the volume up, bottom puts the volume down. Um, there are a couple different modes there we'll talk about in just a little second here. Now, a question I get about the Peltors all the time is what the hell is a single versus dual comm? Do I need a single? Do I need a dual comm? What's better? Is one better or worse? Those are good questions and they come from not understanding precisely maybe what the Peltors are made for. So the Peltors are made to hook into radios. Now the single lead is for hooking into one single radio. So it hooks into one push to talk. And then from there, that will then go into one radio. Now there are, there are many exceptions to this. I'm being very basic right now. So what a dual does, it has a second down lead coming from the other side. That way you can hook into two different push to talks to two different radios. Now there are of course different setups when it comes to comms. So we're not gonna get into them. You can hook into two through one, but we're not gonna get into that. The point is, they're the same, it's just how many different push-to-talks you kinda wanna jack yourself into. 
So let that be a note. But for the vast majority of you, I'm guessing you either need one or probably none, in which case you probably can do fine with the Peltor um, Defenders, which are great. Now, when it comes to this headset, this headset can be mounted to helmets. So we're not going to get it. Now, when it comes to this headset, it can be mounted to helmets. We're not going to get too deep into it, but to mount it to a helmet, you do have to kind of destroy the headset. You have to pop them off right here. So you have to put them sideways, pop them off, and then you have to put the adapters on. They're pretty tough to do, and oftentimes people break this little nub right here, and then the headset's like freaking done at that point. So it's tough, and then you're not easily able to convert it back and forth. There are different versions out there made by like Signal, uh, Atlantic Signal, that makes it easier to do that. Um, I'd highly recommend contacting them if you need any um, you know, help doing that. Now, when it comes to the Peltor Compact 3s, there are various modes that you can get into. So when you turn it on, you can actually equalize, and you can make one ear louder than the other. So if you have you know, a partially deaf ear from a bunch of Marines yelling raw into your ear all day, then you can um, change the volume in each uh, earpiece. How you do that is you hold both buttons down for about 10 seconds. It's going to cycle on and off, and then you can balance it between the two to let you know when it hits about equal. You can also change the equalizer. So what you do is it kind of changes what type of ambient noise is picking up, you know, higher pitch or lower pitch, and you can swap that out as well. A lot of people don't know that, but the uh, Peltor Compacts are fairly user-friendly in that you can configure them to precisely what is going to work for you. So I'm a big fan of the Pelter Contacts for that reason. They're also pretty reasonably priced. Right now, it's a great market for these. You can get these for about $350 used. Um, some of them are broken, so be careful with that. If you buy them new, you're going to pay a lot more, probably closer to five or 600 But the Pelter Contacts are the gold standard. And one reason for that is the sound. The sound, when you put these on, is enhanced. Uh, you feel like an apex predator when you have these things turn on with their active hearing protection. And that sound that comes through is very precise. It's very natural sounding. It enhances. You have a really good situational awareness, both in front and behind you. Um, one of my buddies had these turned up all the way and had it on that boost mode so you can get that fifth uh, hearing level. And a fly flew by his microphone right here and he freaked out because he thought like a mutant fly was flying by him. So these things are pretty awesome. So anyhow, Pelter contacts are one of the first choices and probably one of the best choices you can make if you need this type of hearing protection. The next type of hearing protection that we're going to talk about are going to be the MSA Sordon types. Now, a lot of companies use MSA Sordons as a base and that they build their own comms capable headsets off of them. That's what I have here today. I don't actually own the MSA Sordon, um, but they are excellent headsets. Right here we have the Liberator 2s and then we also have the High Threat from TEA. Both are excellent systems. This is a single, this is a dual. Um, when it comes to these, the um, the noise reduction rating on the MSA Sordon type headsets is a little bit lower. It's around 19 for its decibel reduction. Now, I still find that to be completely and utterly usable when it comes to shooting outdoors. Indoors, total no-go. You definitely need to double up on these. Now, with these right here, these Liberators, you notice they have the foam pads instead of the gel cups. So these are a little bit less comfortable than my TEAs with their gel cups, but they still work plenty fine. The MSA Sword and Type headsets boost about a 600 hour battery life. Pretty good, again, it's pretty similar to the Pelters where it's closer to about 80 to 100 depending on what's going on. Now with their batteries, it's from one section right here. And they kind of slip in right here and one pops up a little bit higher. It's kind of a little weird. Um, it can be kind of a pain sometimes to pop the other battery out, um, but it definitely works. Now. On some of these, this battery compartment right here doesn't have a lanyard holding the battery cap to the headset itself. Like on my TEAs, it does not have one. So if you don't have one, make sure that you lanyard it off in some form or fashion or another. But that is those right there. Now as far as functioning goes on this particular set of headphones, it's fairly similar to the Pelter Contacts. So let me show you how that works right here. And get that all the way tightened down right now. See, it's awkwardly stand here, tightening this down. All right, so we have right here in the center, that's the power button, turns it on and off. Pretty simple so far. We have the plus right there, so it's kind of reverse of the Peltors. So plus that increases the amount of sound that it's uh, picking up, and then minus kind of decreases in ambient sound. Now, with the MSA Sword and Type headphones, um, the sound isn't quite as natural as it is with the Peltors. So, it has a tendency to pick up 
kind of more than it should almost. And you'd think that'd be a good thing, but that kind of messes with your situational awareness. Let's say you live in a big house and somebody were to turn the kitchen sink like upstairs and you're all the way downstairs and you turn these on, you boosted these all the way up. They will pick up that water noise all distorted and weird and it kind of sucks. So these aren't my favorite when it comes to um, kind of the noise level they pick up simply because it kind of messes with my um, situational awareness a little bit. And that might be me because I will say this, that I think that the sound quality is a little bit better than the Peltors. It's just that kind of all the noise that they're taking in isn't quite as accurate as far as how close it is to you. And because of that, I don't quite prefer these. That being said, I still do love them. They're very comfortable. Now this particular pair um, is an over the head is a now this particular hair, pair is a behind the neck It's pretty cool. This little pad keeps it in place and then the tension is from the back I can wear these for an infinitely longer time than I can wear the pelters for it's for that reason that I'm sporting the Liberator 2s quite often now before we leave them alone I also should mention the high threat from TEA. These are an over the head headset um, they feel pretty similar to the Peltors. Now, the cool thing about this headset right here is there are adapters that make it easily able to swap between helmet and back to its um, headband right here. So that's a nice feature on the TEAs. Again, others can be configured to do that, but just realize that this one is kind of set up that way. As you can see here, we have our two down leads coming from this headset, and this is the high threat. Very similar to the Liberator, a little bit different as far as the circuitry used, the type of mic used, and a couple other things that set them apart. I do prefer the TEA headset a little bit to the Liberator as far as the sound quality is concerned, and that's due to the hardware and the guts that are within there that are a bit different from the Liberator 2s. So let that be noted. Okay, now we're gonna talk about my least favorite pair of hearing protect. And this is going to be the Safariland HPs. Um, really similar to the Liberator 5s and the Liberator 4s. The Liberator 4 being a single, Liberator 5s being a dual comm. Um, Liberator HPs have no comm equipment on them. You have to send them in to Safariland and Safariland can then do that for you. So if you compare these to the older type sets, they are a lot thicker. That's good and bad. The good thing about this is that these do have a noise reduction rating of 24. That is one decibel higher on noise reduction than the Peltors, which are one of my favorites. And that being said, I find them to be too fat. On top of that, there are just some really odd settings when it comes to the HPs. They don't do sound very well at all. I've mentioned the problems that, you know, the high threat and the Liberator 2 kind of suffer from when it comes to picking up kind of unnatural noises. I find that the Safari Lands are just not very accurate when it comes to the type of sound that they're putting out. On top of that, I found that these headsets don't quite squeeze hard enough onto my head. And because of that, I have a lot of sound leak that gets in and it's probably nowhere close to the noise reduction it should be at. I've contacted Safari Land about this before. It might be because my head is shaped weird, but these do not fit my head well. Um, and on top of that, it's just the overall shape. It has a screw that keeps its um, the batteries in. It's kind of not easily user serviceable. I always keep a um, you know a Leatherman on me so I can unscrew that. But it's just kind of a pain in the ass to unscrew everything. So it's for that reason that I just generally don't recommend the HPs. Um, I don't think they're nearly as durable as some of the other headsets out there, and so I don't recommend them. Now, before we move fully on. I do want to note that the MSA Sordon Supreme Pro are very similar to these headsets I've talked about, but they are very, very durable. There's been some talk in the past about the Sordons being not as durable as Peltor. I think that came down to quality control. I think that the newest ones that are out are incredibly durable and very well built. I'm a big fan of the Supreme Pro X, whatever they call them nowadays, and they definitely rival the Peltors, and they're pretty cheap. They're around like 200, 280 or so. so if you're looking for a pair of headsets that don't have down leads, you don't need to hook into 152s and a bunch of different radios, definitely check out the Sword and Supreme Pros. They are amazing headsets right there. And again, 19 on the decibel reduction. And again, for its noise reduction rating, around 19 decibels, very, very, very similar to these, just different circuitry, um, but great sound quality. All right, so we've talked about a lot of headsets so far. I know you guys are probably getting a little bit fatigued, but let's talk about the last headset here that I wouldn't call a competitor to any of these, but I would rather call probably the best damn headset that you can possibly buy. So the best headset out there, in my opinion, is going to be the Ops Core Amp. Um, it is, without a doubt, the mo most uh, user serviceable, um, user configurable, 
just overall best sounding, best everything headset that is out there. So it has a noise reduction rating of 22 decibels. It's one decibel below Peltor's. Now that being said, I can't really tell the difference between the two. These are very, very innovative and we'll kind of go over them here in just a second. So before we get too far, let's just go to the coolest part about these. The coolest part about these is you have a noise reduction level of 22. Uh, you can obviously pop in you know, earplugs and get more noise reduction, but then you can't hear the sound quite as well. So what Opscore has come up with is what is called the near field magnetic induction earplugs. These are wireless earplugs that you can plug into, you can pop into your ears, and then you can put the headsets over them. The headsets wirelessly power these uh, earplugs and pipe all of the information, audio information, from the headset to these little earplugs. It's perhaps one of the most phenomenal things I've ever used in my entire life. You never have to charge them, you can just keep them on your kit. When you're like, I need a little bit more noise protection, pop those in and you're gonna be good to go. Um, in fact, with these um, earplugs in, I find that the noise reproduction and sound reproduction from the hearing technology on the Opscore, which is already phenomenal, is amazingly better because it cancels out that much more ambient noise. And it's just much more precise. So again, that is probably one of the coolest things about the Opscore amp. And uh, yeah, these are absolutely phenomenal. Now, before we get too far into this, I do want to note that these are expensive. Now, let's get into this. These are around 900. You know, with accessories and everything, probably going to roll you a little bit north of 1,000. But if you're going to be buying comms for a unit or something like that, you're probably going to be going with newer headsets from TEA, Atlantic Signal, Comtac 5s, Comtac 6s, and you're actually going to be paying about the same. So when it comes to price, these are about the same price as new headsets. So maybe even a little bit cheaper. So the headset price is not outrageous. It's just that nobody's used to how expensive um, you know, new headsets are. So everything on this is user configurable. The mic can easily be switched to both sides just like you can the pelters. And that's unlike the sword and types which where it's just stuck on one side. The headband is very well designed, well made. It articulates very well. Flexes on your head, never jackknifes off your head and let sound leaking in. Also, if you ever need to connect these <clears throat> to helmets, all you have to do is peel this back right here. You can pop off the headset and then you can attach it to the helmet adapters very, very easily. Now, I was concerned when I first did that because I was like, oh, these are going to pop off very easily when I'm in the field. But you have to press it in a specific way to pop it off. Because of that, I'm a huge fan of how... Uh, user serviceable these are. I can easily just have one pair of, um, uh, you know, hearing protection that can go from between my helmet and between just wearing it on my head. So it's very comfortable. Also, the down leads are easily installed or uninstalled by yourself with these great connectors right here. Very sturdy, very easy to put in. You can put in any different types of connections depending on the radio. All you have to do is buy the adapter. That makes it much more simple for everyone who's working in a department and possibly switching between radios. Also, once you no longer have those pieces in, it has a little piece right here that you can simply fit in to keep the connection from getting moisture and dust and all that type of stuff from getting inside the headset itself. Uh, incredibly, incredibly forward thinking. The battery caps are all tethered and they're easily grasped by your finger and unscrewed. They pop right off and you can get the batteries out. It's a very quick, very easy battery change. The batteries do last and they quote this at around 120 hours. And I think that's probably the most honest battery life I've heard from a hearing protection manufacturer so far. And I found that to be absolutely true. Maybe a little bit less when the weather is very cold, but 120 hours has seen, seems to be pretty much the norm. Now, much like the Peltors and the Sorens, they do have an auto shutoff feature if they're not used for a period of time. It will beep and let you know. You simply press one of the volume buttons and it will then reset for about four hours. So pretty forward thinking that way you don't just drain the battery if you throw this into your range bag and forget to turn these off. The best part about these headsets is definitely going to be the sound reproduction. The sound reproduction on the Ops Core amps is, without a doubt, the best sound reproduction that is currently out there when it comes to the hearing market. There is just nothing better in my mind. Um, Safariland does have a DEHP, which I don't have a 
um, a pair of here right now, which do sound good, but are still nowhere close to the Opscore amp, which is without a doubt the best out there. So I plug this enough. Let's go ahead. Let's put my lapel mic in each of these and let's do a hearing test. I'm going to talk to you through the headsets and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the Peltor Comtac 3s. I'm going to pop them right into the headset right here and then we're going to see how they sound when I turn them on. And um, it's going to be, be the judge yourself between all the different headsets out there. to the side and we're going to talk dead on to you and that is going to be the Peltors. Now we're going to turn them down a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to see how that sounds. I typically run them around this level right here. So from behind, from the side, and from the front right there. All right, so those are the Peltor Contact 2s. I'm going to press both buttons at the same time and turn these off. All right, so those were the Peltors. Next up is going to be the MSA Sword and Types from High Threat. Unfortunately, the um, Liberator 2s uh, don't allow me to put the two headsets together to allow you to kind of hear it very well. But the High Threat are fairly similar, and the sound is going to be pretty close. So we'll go ahead and use these as a substitute. If you get angry about it, I'm sorry. sound good. Um, anyhow, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn them down a little bit. Okay, about the mid-level, which is typically where I run my headsets of this type. So again, we're talking into it from behind, talking from behind, talking to the side, and talking from the front right now. And those are the high thread MSA slash sword and types. We're going to go ahead and turn this off. Okay, so we've done the MSA type. Let's go ahead and let's do the Safari Land HPs. Sorry for the cut there. I wasn't sure if they're actually on. I had to put them on to check. Okay, let's go ahead and turn these up all the way. Okay, so these are up all the way. We're going to talk from them from the behind, from the side, and from the front. So these are the Safari Land HPs. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this down two levels. Okay, now we're going to talk to these again from the side and from the front. Now the problem with the Safari Land HPs is that they tend to have kind of mushy buttons. I really don't like how untactile they are compared to like the Liberators or the TEAs or the Peltors or the Opscore Amp. So I really hate these headsets quite a bit, but these are the Safari Land HPs. Okay, last but certainly not least, we have the Ops Core Amp. Um, hopefully these are amazing uh, for you guys, um, but let's just let you guys be the judge. We'll go ahead and pop these in right now. I can't get these in very well. Okay, so we have them on. What we're gonna do now is turn them all the way up. Up. I'm going to talk from behind on the Opscore amp, from the side, finally we're going to talk from the front. This is the Opscore amp. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn it down two notches. That's typically about where I run them, maybe a little bit higher depending, but this is from behind, this is from the side, this is up front. And those are the Opscore amps. We're going to go ahead and turn these off. And they are off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed the little uh, comparison we had between all the different headsets out there. Hopefully you learned something, you found which one sounded better. Personally, for me, the Offscore amps sound phenomenal, and very clear, the best sound um, quality possible. So get out there, find those headsets that work for you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you get training from some great guys like Haley Sutedrick, Drew Essel, Cogworks, CoreVision, 
Well, these are great people. Thank you for watching, and I've got nothing else for you. Okay, the very last thing that I have for you is to make sure that you hit the Stairmaster from time to time. It's a man crusher. Get out there. You know, if we've gotten this far, we're going to talk about Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like Costco, but for the gun world, a lot of people are saving a ton of money. Get in there. It's a link right in the comment section, um, and check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. You know I love you. Take care.